can you feel the fear? Are you afraid? I don't know what's wrong with some people, but this happened quite a few years ago and I'm now just writing it down. For some context, I'm a guy who had just gotten into college. I live with my parents to save on money by not living right near campus, since it's right in the next city over. I don't go out too much anymore since schoolwork is pretty heavy, and that's really all I have time for. Plus, the video games won't play themselves. Anyway, I had just gotten settled into doing the classes and things, and I was having a pretty good time with it all. I was securing my future and I was looking forward. I'm a pretty positive person and outgoing, so I like to talk to most everyone. There's a smoking area right outside the back door of the college that's a really good place to meet other people. I don't smoke, but hey, whatever. So as time passes, I've gone out there to talk to all kinds of people. They were all pretty cool in the different personalities and places that they came from, and hearing about their plans and all that. Everyone going there was pretty cool. I would even sit and talk to some of the professors that were teaching there. A few weeks into the semester, I went outside to meet a pretty strange dude. He was sitting out there all alone, and was smoking and sitting on top of one of the tables. I decided since classes hadn't begun yet that I'd go and talk to him for a bit. He seemed cool at first, but then got kind of a little annoying with his jokes. Some of the jokes were a bit racist, some of the jokes were borderline about gays. I told him out of sheer discomfort that he should be careful telling jokes like that in case someone doesn't like them. He just said, oh it's okay for me to tell those jokes, I'm gay. I just shrug it off because I couldn't care less since it wasn't me that could possibly get in trouble for making jokes. Only him. I sat and talked to him a little bit more until my class was about to start. So I told him I had to go and got up and left. He didn't say anything, he just waved me on. Later on, my class took a break for us to go do whatever, and I went back out to the smoking area to see who was out there. The guy I'd talked to before was still out there, but so was my new friends that I'd talked to for weeks now. I kind of ignored the guy for the most part, but about five minutes in, he came over and grabbed me from behind. And I mean, behind. I told him not to do that and he just laughed it off and called me homophobic. I guess I was supposed to laugh or something. Since I knew that conversation wouldn't go anywhere past just that, I just ignored it and continued talking to the people that weren't him. A few minutes go by and it was about time to head back in. He then injected himself into the conversation and everybody just kind of left one by one to go back inside. I could see the decency drain from his face as everyone turned to go in with such bad timing. I guess he thought everyone was running from him, but I assure you that was not the case. I left with everybody else and went back into my class which was already going again. On the second break, I was met with him right outside the door of the room. He asked me if I liked him. I looked at him and I just told him I barely knew him, I didn't have a reason to hate him. He said good and walked with me out to the smoking area again. I knew what he meant, I just wasn't going to fall into his trap. I ignored him again for the most part and talked to the people I knew would give me a good conversation. I didn't mind that he tried to be a part of it, but he was definitely trying too hard. No one took any jabs at him or anything, but you can tell no one wanted him there because he'd say something to derail the entire conversation and it would go quiet. Later on in the next few days, I could hear people talking about how annoying he is and they didn't want to talk to him. I saw someone go to the door of the smoking area, turn around, and go somewhere else to smoke. Having a conversation with him was that bad. 
I stopped going out there myself after a while and just talked to people in the lounge area. In the coming weeks, he did approach me and ask me why I was avoiding him, and I told him I wasn't trying to. I also told him that I had no reason to seek him out because I talked to a lot of people in this school. He got mad at that and walked off. It was true. Why do I need to feel obligated to just talk to him when no one else wants to go out there anymore? I don't care. At this point, I started to want to have nothing to do with him because if he's going to act like that when we barely know each other, how would he be if we became friends and I wanted to talk to someone else? Not going to happen, buddy. A little while later, I started going back out there with everyone else, and they talked about starting a routine of going someplace once a week each week. I was asked if I was in, and I told them sure. I was down to go have some sort of weekly ritual to unwind a little bit. It sounded fun. We started doing that, and guess who would follow us down there to do the thing? I don't remember his name. I don't think I ever asked him what it was. That happened a lot, come to think of it. He'd follow us down there, and we'd leave in separate cars to go home. One of those times, he followed me home and decided to make himself known. I told him it was late and that he needed to go home. He just yelled at me, I knew you didn't like me, and sped off in his car. The morning after that happened, he showed up in the smoking area at school a bit late, to, I guess, cause a scene because he walked straight up to me and asked me to go out with him. I told him I wasn't gay and he should have known that by now. He got really pissed off at that, kicked over a trash can dumping all the trash on the ground. He stormed off and left the school in his car. I didn't see him again after that, but one thing I found out kind of scares me. Someone said, thank god he's gone. One of the professors that was out there at the time finished his cigarette and put it out before he said, he wasn't even a student here. I don't know why he was even here. So, some dude that wasn't even going to the college was coming up here for... What reason? To pick someone up? He couldn't have had anyone here he was picking up or dropping off, because no one had ever seen him with anybody. I guess I'll never know because I didn't see him again. I finished college and all that's behind me now. It's like a distant memory of something that happened in the past and a group of people who will never get together again in that same way. But I'm glad that's all it took for him to stop hanging around a school that he didn't go to. I went to the beach with my two friends over the summer in 2009. I won't go back because this guy lives there, as he told us a few times. My friends and I were splitting rent for a beach house within walking distance of the beach so we could all afford it. The first two days weren't that bad, but on the third day, as we were walking along the beach trying to find a good place to set up and enjoy the place, along with the thousands of other people there, this guy came walking in the other direction. He stopped there at a little spot and started talking to us. None of us minded that he wanted to talk, but he kept insisting that we come back and crash at his place for the night. We told him that we had a place that we were renting for the entire summer, and we'd be crashing there since we were paying for it. He told us that he lived in town as a permanent thing, and that he was actually pretty lonely at night. We told him thanks, but we were not not going home with him. He shook off the rejection and asked if he could stay and hang out for a little while. My friends and I decided since there were a ton of other people around that it wouldn't be such a bad thing, as long as he didn't get weird. He did, but only after a little while. We settled in and just talked for a while before deciding that we'd go have a little dip. He seemed nice enough, but when we all got into the water and started playing around, he started getting a little too close to me. He'd constantly go underwater and grab various parts of my body and come up and call it an accident. I knew it wasn't an accident, and I told him half-jokingly to stop, but tried to sound as serious as I could on the other half. He noticed after a while of this that he wasn't getting anywhere, 
so he started grabbing my other friend. Jess isn't the type to just take someone grabbing her, and I probably should have warned him, but I was just going to leave it alone. He went to go grab her. She squealed and kicked him in the mouth. He came back up with a little bit of red on his lip. I thought to myself that he shouldn't have grabbed her, but she cut off my thought with a small rant about him grabbing her. He laughed it off and told her sorry. He then started grabbing my other friend who asked not to be named. She got grabbed one time and quickly got out of the water. When she got out, the other two of us did as well and went back to our little post. I told him when he followed us there that I thought he should leave. He asked why and started apologizing. I wasn't going to take that and told him to go. He got visibly angry, but he did leave. A few hours later, we pulled out our food and started eating. He came up to us again and asked if he could stay with us for lunch. But I told him no, we already were past that. He sat down next to our spot anyway and did nothing but eyeball us. I couldn't tell him he needed to leave the beach because it's a public area. But I did tell my friends after we ate that we needed to leave if he was just going to sit there and stare at us. When we got up to leave, so did he. As we walked back to the house, he followed us a little ways but dipped off somewhere. I guess he got tired of us walking in circles. Once he stopped following us, we went back to the house and locked all the doors and windows. We had a pretty good night after that. Everything was calm and quiet. The next morning, we went out to the beach again and picked a completely different spot on the other side of the same beach. It was no problem for the creepy guy to come find us as he was probably scouting us out and watching us. Once we had set up, the creepy guy comes walking up to us and decided to sit down with us like nothing had ever happened. I told him that he wasn't welcome with us, and he tried to brush off what happened yesterday with the whole new day stuff. My friend got up in his face and told him that if he didn't leave us alone, she was going to bury him in the sand face down and wait for the tide to roll in. He did not like this, so we got up and walked off. Later on that day, after we thought he was finally done with us, he came back and immediately sat down at our spot and tried to kiss me. At this point, I couldn't tell you what was going on. I don't know what was going through his head that he thought he could just walk up and do this or what he thought would happen. Jess got angry and stepped between his gross face and me and kneed him in the mouth. She didn't stop there though. He fell backwards and she got on top of him and tried to choke him out. But he got away and ran. I told her that we needed to leave and go to a different beach or something. We went back to the rental house and came up with a plan. He wasn't going to leave us alone, and I for one was done trying. I was not having a good time anymore. We decided to just pack up and leave. We let the beach house owner know that we were leaving, and he didn't charge us for our stay as we told him why we were leaving and that we hadn't messed up anything. We ended up going over to another beach somewhere else and stayed the entire summer out there with no problems. As much as I would have liked to explore the town at some point, we didn't get to because of a creepy guy. I know he had been following us all over the place, so he could see when we went down to the beach. But someday, we'll go back out there. But maybe not anytime soon. We still remind each other of this story from time to time when we have nothing else to talk about. But it was a bad experience. It was especially bad for my other friend who is timid and can't take that kind of thing. She wanted to leave before we even got there. My name is Beth. I'm female and 19. I used to work at a Target about 30 minutes from my home. When I was 18, it was my first job, and I worked there for a year. I did the evening shifts because of school, but then switched to mornings after graduating high school. That's when I met him. For privacy reasons, let's call him T. T was in his late 20s, really tall, scrawny, and just really creepy looking. 
He had a really creepy smile, when when he laughed it sounded forced, deep, slow, and playing with no emotion. I worked in electronics, and he worked in produce. I would rarely ever see him, so I found it strange when I started seeing him in the break room often. He first struck up the conversation, asking questions about myself. I'm friendly to everyone, so I kept the conversation going by asking him questions as well. A few days later, I was on my break. Surprise, he also arrived and sat across from me at the table. Out of all the available seats and tables, he decided to sit there. Also facing me rather than the TV up on the wall. Creepy. Anyway, I was on the phone with a guy I was talking to at the time. Let's call him A, who is now my boyfriend. That's when he made the rude choice of interrupting me by getting up and sitting at the seat next to me, and then loudly said, Wow, you never told me you had a boyfriend. I awkwardly laughed and got up to ignore him, but that's when he grabbed my arm, very hard. I turned to him and gave him a confused look. He let go and said, Sorry, can I help you with something? I think I have a problem with my phone. Can you give me your number and I'll try to see if the message goes through? I got a horrible gut feeling. I couldn't use the excuse about my phone not functioning since I was on it. That's when A got the funny idea and he said, Give him my number. I'll let you know when his text comes through. So I smiled and said, Yeah, sure. The message went through and I let T know. Then after a while, I hung up with A as I got ready to go back onto the floor. T then saw and told me, Now I have your number with this creepy, disturbing grin. I just said, uh, yeah, you do, and I left quickly. I had the next day off, so I made plans with A for breakfast. We met at IHOP, and he had a worried look when we saw each other. We ordered, and as we waited, we talked and he brought up T, saying, wow, that T guy must really like you, huh? Confused, I asked what he meant. Well, he sent you like 10 messages last night talking about how pretty you are and how he never thought someone like you would ever talk to him. I really felt weird and just brushed it off. However, I started taking my breaks in my car rather than the break room at work. This way, I avoided T and didn't see him so much anymore. As weeks passed of avoiding him, he started taking his breaks whenever I got back from mine. He knew this since I would announce on the walkie when I handed the keys over to another team member so they can cover while I'm gone and when I got back. He would spend his breaks by being near the register and acted surprised when I would walk in any aisle to put items back on the shelves. He started to ask what time I'd be off on the days I saw him, which I found strange, so I would lie to him and tell him 30 minutes earlier or after my actual shift for those days just to play it safe. He also asked why I never replied to his texts, which I knew about since he had blown up A's phone until we decided to block his number, but I just said my phone wasn't working and I'd have to get a new one. Months later I made friends with a few co-workers and started going to the break room again. When he'd walk in, he'd sit at the table with a clear view of me, and when I'd glance over, he was always staring blankly at me. I also started to notice that when he'd use his phone, he'd use it in a way of putting his elbows on the table and having his phone in his hand high up in the air, pointing directly at me. Now personally when I use my phone, I rest my elbows and hands on the table and just look down at it, as many others do, but not this guy. I pointed it out to my friends and one jokingly said he might be taking pictures of me and that's when I started to consider it may be true. On the final point, it was a busy Saturday. For lunch I had Panda Express, and I ate it in the break room. There was another co-worker there. Let's call him G. We made small talk, and that's when T walked in. I felt dread overcome my body, and I just got quiet, staring up at the TV and kept eating. T stood a few feet away from me and struck up a conversation with G while looking up at the TV, completely ignoring my presence. That's when from the corner of my eye, 
I saw T placing his phone on his arm, which pointed towards me. This sick ass was either taking pictures of me or recording me eating. I felt so uncomfortable and stopped eating. I looked over at G who was giving T confused glances. To confirm my suspicion, I got up to throw away my food and I looked at T through the reflection of the vending machine. This creep turned his whole body and phone to capture the back of me. I didn't look back at him. I didn't say anything. I just walked right out. I felt so dirty and disgusted as I pieced everything together. I planned to report his behavior to HR, but I had no proof and only one witness, G, who didn't want to be a part of it. I asked him the same day if he noticed T taking pictures of me, and he said, sure, but let's not think the worst of it. Please leave me out of it. Thanks for nothing, coward. I just let my trusting co-workers know about it, and they said that they support me to report it. So I did, but according to HR, there was not much they could do about it without proof. So I quit the same day. I was not about to stay at a place where I felt my safety was at risk, and HR didn't care. I don't ever plan to step foot inside that target again. This is something I learned from to just trust my gut instincts, and that it's okay to tell someone that you don't want to talk to them. No one can force you to talk to them. So T, quit being a friggin' creep. One day someone will teach you a lesson to leave your victims alone. And I hope you lose my pictures or video whatever you took, you freak. Did you like that video? Well, there's more where that came from. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and follow me on Instagram. Links below in the description. Also, if you have a story to submit to the channel, link will be in the description for r slash sn stories. I'll see you next time.